Since the COVID-19 pandemic opened the eyes of many parents to the radical, hypersexual, and divisive content that has found its way into the curriculum across America's schools, there has been a lot more engagement by those concerned for our nation's children. All over the country, parents and concerned citizens have said enough is enough. What kind of difference has this made in our education system so far? And so many of you are still looking for ways to make a difference in education. What should you be doing? What resources are available to help you do it? Joining me now with all the answers is FRC's Senior Fellow for Education Studies, May Kilgannon, who served in the U.S. Department of Education in the Trump administration. She joins me in studio. Meg, good to see you today. It's great to be here. Jesse. And I've already told everyone that you have all the answers, I... so our expectations are very high. I was I was alarmed at that description. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're optimistic. We we believe in you. And and Meg, to start off, um, th what's happened in the last couple of years? We know that uh, people have become much more engaged. People have learned things about the curriculum. We talk about CRT. We talk about what is legitimately pornography inside sex education curriculum. We we know that some par many teachers are now teaching kids that they can change their gender if they want to. All of this has agitated parents who discovered that this was happening in many cases for the first time. They've begun to take action. We've seen elections determined. Uh, Virginia, that whole state, their, their political landscape got flipped because of this issue. We've seen people running for school boards. How would you describe the impact so far by the engagement from parents? Well, it's been overwhelming. And the, the, the proof of that is the fact that the Department of Justice um, uh, agreed with the Department of Education and, and es essentially classified parents as, as you know, domestic terrorists for yeah. speaking out at school right. board meetings. So that tells you that the energy that's out there and the, the engagement of people in these affairs is having a significant impact. The, 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 the pandemic, the school closures, the, uh, the, the summer of riots during 2020, um, the the election, all of those things contributed to the waking up, essentially, of what had been a very trusting, I think, uh, citizenry. Yeah. And we realized that the institutions that we built to educate our children had been overtaken by really, prog you know, progressive radicals, essentially. And so when we when we engage in the system to try to reverse that, that's somehow seen as us fighting a culture yeah. war, right? We're, we're starting a culture war when, in fact, we're just responding to right. the war that's being waged on our children. And I think that's the correct characterization of this. Uh, you mentioned that one of the impacts, one of the results of the activism so far is that parents have earned the label of domestic terrorists uh, by the Department of Justice. And, of course, they've since walked that back significantly, so we should note that. But what other impacts have we seen policy-wise? Do you feel like school administrators at the federal to the local level are getting the message from parents or do you still see do they still see parents as a problem that they need to solve I think there's there's a certain level of viewing of parents as not quite being on the team in our education system today and that's unfortunate um, I, I know that as a parent who I at one point homeschooled my kids then we had children in Catholic school, we had children in public school, and the the attitude towards the parents in the public school uh, was very much, we're the educators, we're, we're the experts, you're the parents, we're the experts, let us handle the education. We've got this, don't worry about what's happening here, we're, we're, we've got it well in hand because we're the experts and we know what's best for your kids. And yeah. it's been great to see that parents are no longer accepting that that. Uh, answer from this from this their school they understand parents you are the best e expert on your child and you know what's best for your child and you need to be engaged in the system mm -hmm. so that your wishes and your rights and your children's rights are respected in that system now recently on washington watch we've we've highlighted the what's going on in the university system as well specifically in the education programs and and how this really is being pushed in master's degree programs, the yes. education in, in universities, in education, as well as just uh, undergraduate programs that get teacher certification. In your opinion, can we solve 
the challenges that we see happening in our elementary and high schools without addressing the university system? Or are those so connected that in order to get the results we want in our local elementary school, we really have to reform our university system as well? We absolutely must have a pipeline of teachers who understand that their job is to educate children, not to indoctrinate them. And the only way that can happen is if the teachers themselves have not been indoctrinated by a university system that is captured. And we're dealing right now with a situation where there are state funds being spent to indoctrinate students in, uh, you know, racist ideology, queer theory, um, all of all of those things. And so this is a tremendous need to 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 reform that system, but also to make sure that our Christian colleges and universities are not similarly captured because we're all swimming in the same pool of yeah, educational unfortunately. resources, unfortunately. So the rot that's happening in in um, in the state state funded systems is going to impact our Christian colleges and universities. And we must be on guard and be very watchful of those so that the teachers that are coming out of those systems are truly different transformational uh, figures. I think there's Uh, an awareness that this is a really long-term project we've embarked on, right? The schools didn't get to the point where they were telling kindergartners that they can choose whether to be boys or girls overnight, right? That didn't happen like um, Monday morning staff meeting. This is the new agenda, folks, right? It feels like it, but it took a long time, time, right? And so the path back is also going to take a a long time. But if, if we've been on that path, uh, or maybe we've just started on that path for the last uh, 12, 24 months, wherever, however we want to refer to that. What are the signs of progress that you see? What, what's the evidence that you see that, that change is possible, change is happening, and that we really are on a journey to making things better? I, ha- I have two stories for you. One is a, is a um, an email that we got from our intercessor prayer team, and they had been contacted by a member of a school board in a state that we will not name, who had asked for prayer, and um, particularly around the issue of uh, what the school policy would be regarding the use of pronouns, as one example of the things that they that we'd been asked to pray for, and. Um, that had been a big, big debate on that school board. And th- we got the, got an email recently saying that, in fact, the superintendent announced that there would be no pronoun policy. We would not, they would not be including pronouns in their emails and in their solicitations, and that they weren't going to go down the path that was being advocated by the LGBT, uh, you know, yes. uh, incorporated that's yes. out there right now for school. Yes. So... That's a bit of evidence I have that things yeah. are things are changing. Then um, on yeah. one of our uh, resources on the frcaction.org/schools webpage is a, an election report from November of 2021, and um, it, on that report, Amy Covey from Kansas talked about her experience as a, as a candidate. And, and shared some of her uh, thoughts about what she wanted to accomplish as then an elected school board member. Well, um, to bring you up to speed, Amy was disappointed when the Kansas state legislature did not pass a parents' rights uh, protection bill, as so many states have in the last year. So she developed one that in the form of a school board resolution for her school system, and they passed it four to three. It was a contentious vote. It was a big debate, but she got that done. And we are hearing story after story about things like that, Joseph, where the the people who felt called by God to run for office and who have answered that call and run are able in, in some cases to make really big contributions on behalf of, of children and American values. And that is exactly why we are encouraging people to be engaged at the local level. It's so important and so consequential. And I think because we have to play the long game in this, we're talking thousands of school districts across the country. It might even be tens of thousands of school districts. 14,000. Okay, 14,000. And it's the, the little things that moms and dads and grandparents are just kind of taking up in, in their little part of the garden yes. that begins to make the difference. And what you don't see is because it's school district and school board one at a time, that doesn't happen overnight. Right. You don't see the impact of that change overnight. Um, but what we 
what we know is that we will not see the change that we're looking for if people are not uh, doing that. And Meg, I want to ask you this question because you track these things closely. If you could change one thing about our, our education system, uh, whether it's the environment or the system itself, what would that be that you think would, would uh, create a better result for our system? Well, I, I think I would strengthen the family, first of all. Because when children are going into school uh, from a from a, a broken home, from a, a family that's struggling, whether that's economically or emotionally or whatever it is, um, you're you're that the, that's not you're you're going to have a problem from from go. Uh, so right. if we have strong families, that means that parents are able to be engaged at the school system. It means that they are they are regarded. Uh, as as the, the the resource for their children that they should be and not able to be demeaned by educators in that sense. Right. And so um, I think that that would be the one thing I would improve. Well, that and that fixes so many things, right? It fixes <laughs> it the education problem. But the, the trickle down impact, imp effect of that is uh, cannot be overstated. But Meg, for those who are watching who want to do something about this, they, they've been motivated. What resources are, are you offering, the FRC is offering, to help parents and families really make a difference in their local community when it comes to the education system? We have, we have tons of things on our website at frcaction.org slash schools. So please visit there, especially a new fundraising web uh, resource on if you're thinking of running for school board, how can you raise money for your campaign? Make Hill Gannon, as always, we appreciate your wisdom and your time today. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.